Sudan tribe uh, is, a, is a more primitive. They live up in the north. So we've shown this outpost. This time around, we show a different tribe and a different uh, type of architecture and setting. Uh, it's going to be the Izila tribe outpost. Yeah, and just checking if the players can hear us. They should be okay. So much French and in again, there. And again, correct. We're showing a pre-release beta version, obviously, because the game is not out. So you know, if you see anything weird, that could come from that. But the game is pretty, uh, pretty stable already. Well, here we see the, the beautiful. Um, don't jinx it. Absolutely. Yeah. The landscape and the scenery of oh. Oros. So we're more in the uh, um, east. Uh, in this uh, in this part of the game, there's a lot of different biomes. Uh, previously, we've shown the giant uh, cedar trees, uh, and what we really wanted to show was uh, recreate uh, a time when nature was really majestic, much bigger than man. So we want mm. the, the nature to feel very big. Yeah, and we just saw uh, Julien, you know, starting a fire as well. <laughs> really cool. But Obviously, because of the time, uh, <laughs> fire is a very <laughs> important aspect of uh, survival at the time. Yeah. And we just saw the weapon wheel. Uh, I believe he's encountering some enemies. Let's see. Let's see. These look like Mizilla. And Mizilla Patrol. Ooh! Oh nice headshot. Yes, this game, I mean, you guys have seen a bit about Primal and you know that it takes place in the Stone Age. So we have Stone Age weaponry, but we've got a lot of Stone Age weaponry. And if you check the weapon wheel next time Jenny opens it, there's actually a bunch of different things that you can grab. There's not just one bow and arrow, there's a couple different. There's different types of weapons, uh, so you have uh, bows, many weapons, uh, spears, but you also, for each one, you have little dots, so you can swap them, uh, and so you can swap your arsenal, and they all have different properties, so some bows are better uh, long range, some are more rapid fire, so you, you have uh, a lot of diversity in there. And at the bottom, you have all the throwables, so you, Takar, is able to craft different types of, uh, of tools, bombs, these kind of things. Yeah. Uh, using bees, he's able to, uh, using a bee clusters, he's able to uh, throw them at, the, at his enemies in order to uh, distract them. Yeah, and I see that some users in the chat were asking if this is live or pre recorded. No, no, it's live footage. So what you see. That's why I'm not playing. <laughs> back, in the, back, in, oh. <laughs> back in the far, you were seeing. Uh, so this is night. Night is super dangerous. That's when the predator comes out. So here Julien is very scared. <laughs> <laughs> so he whips out his, uh, his weapon, sets it on fire. Nice. So all the weapons you have, you can set on fire. You can then use them to uh, ignite the world and also animals. And uh, with the fire, it creates uh, something that scares animals. So you can repel them at night. So it makes your traversal. Uh, really and on VC, you can also set them on fire. Yeah. Which, which I is think is a, a pretty valid tactic. Yeah. And we didn't see it so but just before you fire could and see stone. Uh, <laughs> And just before you could see the, the like a village from afar uh, behind you, I think Julien, uh, with like the lake. And, uh, yeah. So Far Cry Primal does go through day-night cycles. Yes. yes. And the, the, what's interesting is the setup for uh, for the location changes. So uh, depending uh, if you go by day or by night, the guards are, are doing different kind of things. By night they light the fire. They're more around the fire, playing music. So uh, it's a different opportunity. And, and here uh, we're at actually this is a, a quarry. Uh, so the Izila, they're a little bit more advanced. They're already constructing things. They have this megalithic structure all around the world that delimitate their uh, their territory, but they also use it for uh, for rituals. So here is one of the locations where they would uh, start crafting these things. What's interesting for us is to show how the people were living at the time and how the different tribes are also living. Is that cave bear eating someone? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> oh, what did you just? That doesn't throw? seem like a good plan. So. Part of the arsenal, so we showed the weapon, part of the arsenal of Tarkar as the Beastmaster is also his ability to tame uh, wild animals in the world. So this is something you unlock as you progress in the game. But here, uh, Julien is just taming uh, this bear. It's not a cave bear, it's a small bear. The oh. cave bear is like twice this size. Yeah. You can even so thank you for nice correcting me. <laughs> yes, it's important for me because I'm more about yes. to accuracy, you know. <laughs> pet the bears, pet the bears. And yes. you're riding it now as well. And so, oh, so this is oh, a cave whoa. bear. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair and enough, that's completely enough. unexpected, right? Fire! <laughs> and actually, you saw the enemies are also using fire uh, against the, the cave bear, so yes. I, but I, it doesn't care, I think. This, this Man, I think cave bear does not. <laughs> okay. Run away! Yeah, so he's riding his bear. Yes, you can ride your bear. There's a few, uh, a few other animals that you can find. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it ate your bear! Oh, it did at you! Oh my god, okay. 
So bears are a little bit less scared by fire, yeah, as we can see here. <laughs> see, I also think they, they swim. Yeah. So when you try to, uh, for some of the predators, you can also go in mm -hmm. water in order to escape them. But bears, they swim. So okay. <laughs> the chat's asking, "Where's the pokeball?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! Thank good God. job! Good job! And so you can after actually setting revive. Setting the world on fire. Yeah. <laughs> you can heal your beast even if it's down, right? Yeah. You, you just did that. Awesome. Right. Yes, food is used in order to heal yourself, your beast. Mm -hmm. It's part of the uh, economy of the game, so yeah. you need to hunt also to gather food. Yeah. And there was a little bit of a like a timer. Uh, you had uh, like a limited time. Yes. To when uh, your beast is down, you have a limited time in order to uh, revive it, and uh, otherwise you can actually uh, resurrect it. But you need uh, some specific plants that you find in the world. Okay. Ah, so this resurrection is going to plants. Be, uh, from the yes, the famous version. Beautiful. No, but this is going to be from the menu. Okay, and I think on the minimap we can see you nearing the, the outpost that we yes. wanted to show. Have a blade up. Your beast is following you. still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the animals in Beastmaster, they kind of react. I mean, you, you can control them and kind of give them directions, but they also maintain their regular AI. Yeah, so if something's oh. going to happen. Oh, nice. And you it's just called to another be, beast. Uh, to be systemic, they remain uh, systemic beasts, uh, but you can actually point them towards something. So if it's a, if it's a place, they're going to go there. If it's an enemy, they're going to attack it. I see Julien is doing uh, the subtle role. <laughs> <laughs> I like his play style because very he's, quiet, uh, he's yeah. very, uh, very uh, subtle, discreet. Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> Saber tooth, take down. Oh. No. Nice. That was just a villager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it? It was in my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, it's, it's still, uh, we're changing a lot of the aspects of, the, uh, of Far Cry with this game, but uh, we also want it to remain Far Cry, so you will have your, uh, your freedom of approach. Here Julien is going uh, full weapons blazing in. I missed! Uh, but uh, I missed there, there's going to be a, a lot of different approaches. You can go in stealth, so you have a lot of different toys that you can use as you uh, assault this place. And of course, oh. when you assault them, the alarms are rung, so the so patrols are going to come, uh, come in. And, uh, so and those are chieftains. Yeah. yeah, the chieftains are tougher and also they are... <laughs> and these are the bee bombs that are actually distracting Not so them. tough against bees. Yeah. And clusters. And everything is on fire. This so is beautiful. the chieftains are better at fighting your beasts. So, uh, even if you have a, a, a set of weapons, there's a vulnerab vulnerabilities also, so you need to manage the different types of units. And he has a kind of uh, area of effect, we see it, like when he hits oh, the ground with his club. Yes. Oh, nice. So you as you, yeah, as you can tell, every weapon you can light on fire and you can throw every weapon. Which I think is wow, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty impressive. Damn. Damn, you're killing it. So subtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so subtle. Uh, so oh, oh you beast. Now he means business. He's got the double buff. Oh. Double boom. And uh, yeah, fire is an important part. We wanted the world to feel like it was very vulnerable. So <laughs> well, it obviously uh, is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was the, uh, this is the bomb that makes his enemies yeah. crazy, so they will uh, turn and fight uh, any, any people around them. Uh, this is something we develop uh, later on in the game. Uh, which we steal from the Udam. Oh, nice shot. I love that that saber tooth out of nowhere. Yep. Saber tooth out of nowhere. Take the hand. <laughs> And as you can see, like we're showing Julien playing it right now. This is For those who are wondering if it's real live gameplay. Hey, someone in the chat asked if you can ride a bear. That's how we started. Yeah, that's how we started. Riding a bear. And then uh, it was Sega attacked. Tooth also and Mama. Beautiful. Ooh. Oh. Okay, these chieftains mean business. Yeah, yeah and now they're fighting oh, each other yeah, because he used uh, the, the yeah, poison bomb. Friend. Yeah. So this is another way of creating chaos and just watching <laughs> it burn. Okay, is this your last guy? No, oh there's God. another one. I think there's another one in the back, yeah. Ooh! Those chief thin area of effect uh, fire swings are pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. won't you die? <laughs> pretty strong opponent. We have a lot of uh, diverse units, uh, oh. ranged, melee, etc. So as you progress, also you will encounter a harder version of them, elite version of them. And, uh, it's uh, uh. when you tag them uh, and you have the yeah, icon over their head, you have the information oh. also about uh, the Good type one. of units. Yeah. And that's there are two that's enemies there. Cool. <laughs> Jay, I believe in you. Yeah, you yes, can do you it. Can like do I believe it. that it. you can. You can massacre. Oh, in the foot. So obviously, kind of the uh, full-on assault is a fun way to go, 
but you're going to encounter a lot of resistance. Yeah. And the last enemy hit somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Maybe they're kind of smartly hiding. Go. Yeah. They must be hiding in the in the house. Maybe. <laughs> get him, buddy. Get and him. And nice uh, transition to the um, to the day cycle as well. There you go, hiding in the bush. Yay! Oh, good no. job. <laughs> and that's yeah. how you deal with an outpost. That was absolutely <laughs> brutal. Pretty awesome. Good job, Julian. Thanks. Yeah. An open world mission. Yeah, this yeah. is one. This is called the uh, Spirit Totem, and the idea is uh, a part you haven't seen here. You've you've met someone who's told you uh, that uh, one of your fellow Wenja was going out in the world to place a totem, and he hasn't returned. So something's happened to him. So so your mission is now go uh, go find this guy, grab his totem, the totem, and you know and place the totem. Uh, spirit totems are are important uh, to the Wenja. They're a tribe that is. Um, uh, uh, animistic. Uh, they believe in uh, uh, all things have a spirit. So not just uh, uh, people, but they believe plants, even uh, inanimate objects like um, uh, rocks and the tree. Oh, wow. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The rocks uh, have a spirit. So uh, placing a, uh, um, a totem is a way to, uh, uh, they want to place it so that they, they believe that the, then they have a spirit kind of watching over them. Okay, like so a, that's like a protection almost. Exactly, exactly. So that's why it's important for them to uh, place these totems. And you'll do that throughout the world. And this is just one mission that mm -hmm. uh, shows you about that. And uh, where are we? <laughs> where are we? I'm in trying this to remember. Fantastic which, land of Uros. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Oh, Ooh, okay. Already some, is uh, this the guy? No, okay. So this isn't the guy who. Nine. No. No. <laughs> You this isn't the body you're looking <laughs> this for. This isn't the body you're <laughs> looking for. <laughs> but I think you've got to be careful because I believe there's uh, Udam. Uh, yeah, there they are. There's Udam around here. Yeah. In this area. So we're going to have to watch. It. Man, good, good shot, JJ. Man. Wow, oh, good, good jump, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I think there's I would have definitely fallen on that one. Yep. And that is why we brought in JJ. the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> JJ. Yep. JJ Elite. JJ Elite. <laughs> JJ He's gone from noob to elite. I like that. That's nice. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so we are getting a ton of questions in mm. the chat, yeah. which we're going to kind of hold on to for a bit later. Yep. We but just know that we see you. That was uh, Hunter Vision you were using there, which is great. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, the Hunter Vision, I think we've talked about it a bit before, but it, it was Shoot important. Shoot a deer. <laughs> Shoot a deer. <laughs> yeah, Shoot yeah. a deer while you're looking for a, a spirit totem. <laughs> Uh, the Hunter Vision is uh, 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 an important feature. This is the Stone Age, and uh, survival was paramount. So, so their sense of uh, awareness of nature around them was, was key to survival, and, and it was highly tuned. So for us, we wanted to make sure we had this, this feature in the game that reflects that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it just highlights all the things you need to see. You can track animals with that as well. You can track people if you wound somebody. Oh. I yeah. find that in the game, I guess because, oh my god, you're nice. just destroying these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we're dealing with a kind of Stone Age man who is making all of their equipment from what was around them, I find it so oh hard no. to spot these guys. Because they're so well kind of camouflaged. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? They, aren't, they, they, they don't have a bright uh, uh, red or... Uh, uh, like, they're not really flashy in the, in the colors, or you don't see a vehicle with headlights coming yeah. up at you. Yeah. And you just set him, set him on fire. Well done. That's one way to see him. <laughs> so yeah, several approaches to this mission. Yeah, someone in the chat noticed that animals don't always die straight on. Yeah. And they don't. I mean, unless you kind of really land a critical headshot, um, they don't die. And so you can use your hunter vision to kind of chase after them. Yeah, exactly. That's where the blood becomes important. And ah, there Aww. we go. Okay, so we found Sorry, the totem. Bud. Found Poor it. guy. Yeah, he probably fell from oh. there or something like that. Nice. This is a kind of cool kind of cave painting. Yeah, I noticed that. Huh? It, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a. If you see that, right there. So what's cool? You see that? Uh, it's an indication. If you look up, oh. there's a grappling hook. Oh, <laughs> so it's okay. literally you, to kind of tell you, you that. Gives you a little clue that hence. you've got something up above that can help you climb. Okay. Someone did ask, is there a grappling hook? Yes. But there you go. Grappling.